a word about lichens. Let's talk about lichens. Michel will show us a short demo about one bark dying with lichens. Lichens do not belong to plant. Lichens represent a mysterious coexistence of fungi and green algae. The algae part is able to photosynthesis and produces food, means, sugars and so on, while the fungal part produces other chemicals, among them also colorants, some of them being unique and not found in plants or other organisms. Lichens were very important for dyer of the past. First, one important fact, lichens can not be cultivated and grow very slowly. It is very interesting to experiment with them, but they can not be considered as a serious source of natural dyes today. Do not be predators, collect windfall lichens. Gathering windfall does no harm since these lichens are not able to continue growing anyway. In the past, people used lichens for two dyeing methods. First, for orchil purple and second, for traditional mordant process for yellows, beiges, olives, and browns. Orchil purple is a complicated process, and Michel does not recommend it to modern dyers as this process cannot be considered as being eco-friendly and a green. Let's anyway mention the chemistry of this process. Similar to indigo, orchil dye does not exist in the plant in the colored form. It exists in a form of colorless or slinic acid and its precursors. To produce the dye, dry lichens are crushed to powder and soaked in a warm water containing ammonia. In old times, they used old urine. The further process included prolonged steeping and oxidation. During this process, different compounds are hydrolyzed giving colorless orsinic acid, enzymatically converted to colorless orsin, which gives purple or kill, reacting with ammonia and oxygen. Orkil dyes are very beautiful on wool and silk, although not very fast. This is a direct dye, which does not need mordants. However, as we told, this method is not eco-friendly. But lichens contain also quinone dyes, anthroquinones, which can be used either as mordant dyes or in one bath process. They give beige, yellow, golden tones. See beautiful botanical illustrations made by Swedish scientist Johan Peter Westring. Michel shows us one bath process with lichens. Maybe similar process was used by Vikings. Lichens, tannin from the bark and citric acid from wild berries. So as an example of resource can you, that you can get from one territory, I will give you the example of lichen. Lichens are very common on many trees and rocks. So I, took, I will take the example of lichens on dead wood that you can harvest on the floor in some local forest. There are different types. If you observe, you can have a uh, um, Evernia uh, type you can have um, Parmelia type, and among them different species, so that's a di diversity. But, well, taking the example of those uh, Parmelia um, caperata, I would uh, tell you that we know by experimenting, also by observing, uh, that they have some quinone dyes. Look at this one, for example, it's turning a bit rust, of rust color when drying, um, even sometimes they, they are almost orange. It means that they, the coloring matter which is inside would appear when drying, so that gives an information about which one to harvest, whatever you don't know the name. So that's very interesting. These lichens are uh, made of uh, fungus uh, accumulating quinone dyes and then we can have a, a solution of these lichens by just cooking them first. If you, if you just 
put the whole thing like this you will also put some bark of the of the dead wood and that's interesting to to know that in the bark there is tannin of course which is never in the lichen by itself because lichens are not uh, plants they are fungi hosting a, a kind of seaweed but, uh, so by putting even pieces of branches together that's interesting to get that we get tannin in it if ever you harvest a little berries at the same time you know wild berries which will give a kind of organic acid we will have a natural uh, one bark process tannin citric acid and quinone so uh, in this case I will put uh, a little bit of uh, tannin from the oak but it could be acorn that you find in the forest also so can you imagine kind of diversity of things in your basket having the lichens the acorns some little sour, sour fruit and you natural naturally prepare your wamba process so to increase the effect I will add a bit of this tannin extract from the uh, from the oak gall and also a bit of citric acid and that's my formula very easy so I have to do first the extract so it will take one minute and then I will have kind of yellowish preparation and from that I will put my silk in and get an interesting shade hopefully so I need to be patient so it will take some minutes and then we will see creamy but we need we need some time of course we can we are not forced to boil the silk we can also boil the lichens prepare the mix with citric and tannin and then soak the silk for some time well, it's up to you to see what's your favorite. I'm mm -hmm. very pleased yeah. to show you that kind of soup, you know, kind of a witch cauldron with plenty of wild things of the forest together. Okay. So it's coming a bit more actually. So I have to wait a bit. So it will take. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think now we can abandon that and see that in a few minutes. It was a short demo, we did not have enough time to make a range of colors, but take a look, we can have nice beiges with this simple method. You are cordially invited to Michelle's Facebook group. Ask questions, show your work, and welcome to the tutorial too. Mordens. Creating Affinity.